Hey guys, what's going on? This is Perry with PremierGuitar.com and I am here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Exit Inn hanging out with the guys from The Sword. This is JD. What's going on, JD? Not too much. Thanks for having, uh, having us over here to check out your, your rig here. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at your uh, pedals here. Sure. Cool. So the chain is, I'm guessing, coming out of your amp right into the noise suppressor. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, let's see. Yeah. yeah. So you go into the hush and then into the polytune. Mm -hmm. And then what's this guy here? Uh, that's just a vocal pedal, actually. That's a doubler. Oh, cool. Um, just for the vocals. It's not even hooked up to the guitar chain at all. Oh, it's, that's just on the board. Yeah, so it's a mic pedal. Yeah. Vocals, cool. And then into a carbon copy. Delay. Carbon copy, yeah. Um, the Bogner Ecstasy red pedal. Uh, cool. For drive. Yeah, just that's the main distortion. Uh, and it's got a sweet boost on there also. Very, um, very cool. That's like you can control the gain and the volume of the boost separately. Um, so that's, I really like that. That's pretty handy. And, uh, yeah, good old phase 90. Phase 90, can't go wrong. Yeah. One knob, it's pretty rad. Cool, JD, so let's talk about this orange. This is kind of new, right, the OR100? It is new, it uh, came out last year. Um, and uh, it's great, I love it. It's uh, remarkably simple, yet remarkably complex. It can kind of be any kind of amp you want it to be. You can run it full or half power, four or two tubes. Very cool, um, 100 watt, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, of course, run full power when we play live. Sure. Um, and yeah, I've played oranges for ever. Um, and then two 12s? Two 12s and four 12s, so six, cool. six 12s. Same speakers, do you know what's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, actually, I'm not sure. These might be a lower wattage speaker than, than the, these in these cabs. So it gives it a slightly different tone. Cool. Yeah. What are you playing for strings on? Are you playing like 10s or 11s? Uh, we play uh, the, like the hybrid gauge, so where it's like a, like a 52 a to like a 10. Gotcha. Yeah. You like those? Yeah, it's yeah. It's different it, tension and stuff, right? Yeah, it kinda... makes it so it's like, I mean, I find that a lot of people that tune down uh, think that they need to use really heavy strings because they, they're afraid of uh, their strings being loose. Right. And Womp. to me, they, they need to be a little loose. You know, too right. tight, you're not going to get that wow, you know, yeah. that detune sound when you hit them hard you know super low note sure, so sure. you know it's got they can't be too tight so, but you know you can't be too loose either you can't use super light strings either they will just flop all over the place right. so come out of tune the, yeah the, for our the way we play and and tune those those kind of hybrid gauge that that's the best for us because keeps the lower strings in the right tension but then the upper strings you can still bend and you know you want to talk uh, guitars is this your number one uh this is you know one of the number ones sure um yeah this is uh 79 uh, Explorer 2. Um, super rad. What pickups are in it? Uh, it's uh, DiMarzio's, a Super Distortion, and a Super 2. Um, yeah, this is, you know, one of my, one of my main guitars. That's the one, huh? You, yeah. Do you have a, a boat? Do you carry a bunch with you? We have a few. We, we each bring two. You cool. Know. All right, so here we have, it looks like a, a, a Les Paul. Yes, sir. Um, this is a Les Paul Custom. Um, I think it's one of 50. Um, it's an 07, I believe. Uh, yeah, limited edition. I just got it off of eBay. I mean, I didn't, it's didn't beautiful. have I like to the know natural. anybody to get that. But uh, yeah, you know, it's like it's it's meant to kind of I think harken back to the 70s natural finish ones. But totally. It's got just a two-piece top instead of a three-piece top, and it's got a mahogany neck instead of a maple neck, which I like. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. I love it's it. Really cool. Um, Same, or you have the similar pickup configuration in this? Uh, this one in particular, I use mostly super distortions uh, in most of my guitars. Cool. Uh, then in the neck of this one is a uh, um, uh, Seymour Duncan Pearly Gates. Oh, Pearly Gates, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just for fun, kind of. Yeah, just um, for an extra tone. That's yeah, cool. and I like these bridges a lot, the TP6 bridges. With the fine or tuners, tail, tail right? pieces, yeah. And not, not so much for the tail pieces, but they, they increase the mass Okay. They yeah, I've just, heard that. I've heard yeah, that argument. They before. make it sound yeah. sweet. I mean, they, it, it, I, I think there, there is something to it. <laughs> yeah, very cool. All right, guys. So uh, we're here with Kyle talking. Um, oh. We're gonna talk about his pedal board here and a really, really cool amplifier here in a second. But um, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about what you got going on in your signal hey, chain? What's up, man? Uh, let's see. Uh, what does the whole thing plug into? Dave, where's Dave? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, we got uh, the. I think the, uh, let's start with the guitar. So I play this sure. Electra Omega on this tour, and it plugs right into my Boss Chromatic tuner. Fantastic. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, then we go into a Vox Wah, but uh, our bass player, uh, Brian, which we'll get to more along the line, um, actually took this thing apart and monitored it out with some uh, weird kind of like uh, attenuator that's like 
this Navy SEAL guy built. It's got this pod around it that keeps it from getting dirty. You know, like when you play festivals and stuff and dirt gets yeah, in your attenuator, it just sounds like <laughs> You know, it's actually a, a pretty a sturdy wah. Um, I wish that the attenuator went more up and more down, but. Yeah, it is what it is. Totally. Anyway, uh, from there we go over to the Boss DS1, which. Uh, hey, tried and true, it's man. That's very a good basic, pedal. But, um, through the amp, I play it through, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. It actually sounds uh, really cool. Um, it's just a really basic distortion. I just uh, I let the amp do most of the work. The pedal is just kind of like my overdrive. Just, just to give it a little oomph. Uh, you'll find out why whenever I get to the amp. Anyway, next <laughs> cool. we go to um, this crazy ass phaser. Uh, it's just a P45 that uh, Brian, our bass player, built. Um, it just has like a bass boost, so I can do some really. It, whenever it kind of goes to the low end, it has this weird like, like the, the low end kind of from the amp combines with it and um, makes a really cool sound. I, I dig it a lot. I don't turn it up too high. It's just, it's on a real slow sweep. Yeah. And I just turn the effect up all the way and let it rip. Let the pedal do the work. Yeah, totally. Um, from there, it actually goes right into our hush pedal, which JD probably talked to you about. These are the old style hush pedals that um, it's not really a, a noise gate. It's a, it's like a hiss eliminator. It's just a bunch of circuits in a row. I think it's like five of them maybe. Yeah. That. Uh, it just eliminates the bulk of your crazy. Um, so it's not gating anything. It's just, no, it's really it's not. Just you, you keep all really your really hum cancellation. Your sustain. If you turn it up too high, it will cut off your signal, but it doesn't affect your tone at all. Um, Very cool. Really, really nice. But uh, it does fuck with time delay things. Ah. Um, so which is why I put my delay after. After it. it. Cool. And um, Brian built this one too, and it's yeah, this another is a Brian Ritchie thing. He just our bass player just builds these pedals at his house and whatever. I'm kind of his guinea pig, if you will. And uh, I, I literally, he writes down what they do, but I don't, <laughs> I don't I just turn the knobs till it sounds good, and then... And just let it, yeah, set it, forget it. Like the, the number one rule of rock and roll is just whatever you have, just turn every knob until it sounds the best that it can sound. <laughs> you, you know, you're doing something right. And then um, that's, that's the pedal, but I got a voodoo power thing, the powers everything, but really, I mean, it's... Um, Pretty simple, yeah, you guys aren't running too many Pedal train, pedals. pedal board, you know, um, pe uh, wires are just whatever hasn't broken yet. All right, man, so you gotta tell me about yeah, this yeah, amp. Yeah. From the crazy. delay, it goes right into the big crunch. And uh, this is my one knob, this is my baby. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, where we recorded Apocryphon, uh, our last record, uh, in the front of the studio was like an amp repair shop called Big Crunch, and um, there's a dude in there that just repairs guitars and amps and stuff, and uh, he, uh, he had this, I can't remember exactly what it was, some kind of Marshall box with like white Tolex that had been gutted and everything and it was just had one knob on it. I was like, what the hell is that? And he's like, oh, it's this crazy one knob amp, man, that I built. It's just like, you know, a fucking power tubes and a plug and a you know, transistor or whatever. That, that was it. Yeah, you know, it was just a, that's it. So and, um, it's volume, it's tone, it's everything. You just it, it already sounds good, so you don't need a tone circuit, you know, and yeah, um, it, there, you don't need a gain circuit because I, it, the more you turn it up, the gainier it gets. And but I just I keep I like the clean tone of it. It's just gorgeous, and I keep it you know about so you dial eleven o'clock or something. I use the DS one, uh, do all the, the the overdrive, and um, it's just it's it's a really clean palette because there's nothing there's no tone circuit to fuck with the tone at all. It's literally just like the most basic amplifier you can get. It just sounds good already, and it's a totally clean palette to try out pedals on and stuff. It's uh, interesting. I mean, you guys really are really crazy. Like the way pedals. Uh, um, affect your signal on other amps or it's completely different totally the way different, it acts huh? on this thing. And uh, it's only 50 watts. Uh, it's just, it, but it's the loudest amp I've ever heard. We totally had a Back to the Future moment uh, the first day I bought it where I just dimed it. It was like, you could hear the amp go, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like, oh man, here it goes, Bow, you know. And, uh, oh, that's great. It man. sounds great, but um, uh, yeah, the, the top uh, input is the like the high end, like direct input. The, the bottom one's what you can use to, if you want to slave it with anything else. And um, that's it's as Very basic simple. as it gets. I mean, it's called Big Crunch. Uh, I'm, this is the only one that he's made from the ground up that I actually commissioned. So this isn't something you can order from No, him? well, if you were real nice and you emailed him, I'm sure he'll build you one. <laughs> but, and you can, he'll do whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, I, I gave him the means to make a nameplate for it. So this is the first one with an actual nameplate that's called the Big Crunch that uh, you can find anywhere really i mean like usually the ones that he builds are like fender twins or something with the whole guts ripped out and it's like a bunch every hole along the face of it except for one knob and the light turns green when you turn it on it looks like a total piece of garbage but it's the best sounding amp you've great. ever heard in your life so it's a i was happy to be able to order a, a nice and pretty one and he was real excited to build it so if anybody wants one hey cool and then you're running these uh these orange caps yeah yeah me and jd started splitting the 
the, we used to have full stacks. We started doing the 412 and 212 combos. 212 and a 412? Yeah, it's just, you like I don't it? know. It's, it keeps, it's, everything's the same height. Aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Sounds great. You know, it's, it's, and each cabinet sounds completely different. The the two twelves are a little twangier. The four twelves are kind of the beef. That's where we. That's why we mic those. The but lower end. These are sure. kind of more of like our stage monitors. Monitors. Almost, you know what I mean? Because it literally kind of aims right at your your midsection. So it's just we get to hear what's going on. Very and, cool. And this is Dave. He's the guitar tech for the sword. He's gonna tell us a little bit more about this uh, this cabinet setup. So yeah, yeah, vintage sixties. Vintage sixties. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. What wattage do you know? I think the top cab is 140 and the bottom is 260. Cool, so it's got, that's a pretty good range of tone as far as the two cabs. Yep. Well, that's awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let's talk. In their talk light. In their light, <laughs> I know. You know, especially the older orange cabs, like the 412, it's like you gotta be a, a mountain man to be able to ride. Those, those, I mean, those push a little harder than like the, the traditional, like the mm -hmm. ones with the orange. Yeah, these are high backing wattage. And stuff and everything. Yeah. Uh, so they're made speakers. for yeah. uh -huh. gainier yeah, sounds? Yeah. No kidding. That's mm -hmm. interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, wow. the vintage 30s are in the uh, orange and then uh, in the, the big orange caps. Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right, uh, you want to talk some guitars? Yeah, sure. Cool, let's go. cool, cool. Yeah, All yeah, right, yeah. we got some Electras going on. These we are do. beautiful. Yeah, they just started making these things again in uh, 2013. And um, uh, Gene uh, at the company reached out to me and was like, hey, you want to start playing these things? And you know, I mean, you know that, that doesn't happen all that often, but it happens every so often where you know guitar people reach out to you and, and uh, and stuff, and um, he, yeah, he just sent me this Omega Prime, and this one's pretty tight. I, I did rip the pickups out of it, sorry. Any, any guitar company should know that, like, no matter what guitar you give me, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna rip everything out of it and put whatever I want. What do you got so, going on here? I just put a Super Distortion here and a, a Seymour Duncan Fat Cat in the oh. neck, and um, it's a really good combo, uh, standard. I'm probably gonna play this one tonight. Um, I played it the last couple nights. Uh, it's I beautiful. Just, I, I, yeah, it's cool, and it's got this, like, um, kind of like the Alex Lifeson. Uh, Les Pauls, like it's got like the neck scooped out right here, right. which like, you know, uh, I learned how to shred on a Les Paul Custom. And so when, when I started playing this thing, it was kind of funny, like it was, it was so easy to play that it fucked me up. You know what I mean? I kind of had to like... You weren't having to reach? Yeah, 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 I had to take a step back and be like, okay, well, I'm, I just need to chill out more. But um, actually, this, this is one of the only guitars that's made me a better guitar player. Wow, that's really cool. So that's kind of different for me. So I was like, you know, these lecture guys, they, they're onto something here. I like, a, um, I like the, the aesthetics a, of the knobs, too. It's got a couple of things that I don't like about it, but I'm not going to talk about that because I like <laughs> these guys. And it's a really solid guitar. Very cool. And um, there was uh, the, the, the things that I didn't like about it were actually fixed in the Prime model, which they, they were cool. Let's kind take enough to send one down. And um, I did what uh, this, this one's different because it's, it's all mahogany. Uh, it's same body form and everything. It's, it's so pretty, you know. Yeah, that back, scoop is awesome. They, uh, they stuck uh, the flame maple on the top, and <laughs> everything else about it is tortoise shell. It's awesome. It's the first time I've seen tortoise shell binding. Uh, oh, the tort inlay. Tortoise I mean. shell inlays. I mean, tortoise shell pit guard, tortoise shell truss rod cover. Um, uh, that, w the first thing I thought that when I saw all of that, I was like, oh, they couldn't have done the logo on tortoise shell. <laughs> I know that. I'm just kidding. Right. I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, I ripped the you know ripped the guts out of it too. Put a uh, put it in a Seymour Duncan Invader in the bridge, which is like super dark. Um, really good for like rhythm shit for the studio. Um, and then uh, a, J a Seymour Duncan JB in the uh, the neck, which is kind of weird. But um, it, it sounds like what you think a JB in the neck would sound like. It's just uh, it a different kind of yeah. it's different. Yeah, yeah. and uh, sounds really cool actually when you put the knob in the middle, which not that many people do. Split the pickups. Anymore. Yeah, Split the just. Get some like really cool feedback kind of tones out of that. So, yeah. I don't know these electric guitars; they are absolutely rad. This one's an Omega Prime, and, and then um, the first one was called just the Omega. Just Omega. Yeah, yeah. Cool. This, this one's got just like it's just a little fancier. Um, Love it, man. Just you know, little bells and whistles. But the the thing I like the most about them is they have these Allen wrench things. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Keep ah. the, the stop bar from falling out. So when you, you change, change the strings, strings yeah, and, like, that's none cool. None of the bolts ever move or anything. And it's just, it's just kind of little things that, may, you know, they're, they're really yeah. solid guitars. Attention to detail. And also people like, you know, uh, talk about like kind of cool guitars, this, cool guitar, that. But um, people in you know, our position need to have a guitar that's going to be reliable on the road. And uh, that's really totally. hard to find because you pay $3,000 for this guitar. And it just, you know, falls apart when you fly to Italy. And some guys like, <laughs> you know, so, but these electrons, like they, they're, really hold up uh, so far. Anyway, it's only been a couple of months, but I have a good feeling. And um, Great looking guitar, man. Really, really sure. nice shit. Yeah. Yeah, totally. cool. Yeah. Well, man, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you talking to us today. Oh, uh, whatever. Really, really cool stuff. I'm flattered you guys came out. <laughs> right on. Cool. Cheers. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Of course. This thanks, is bud. Perry with uh, Premier Guitar. Oh, yeah. I'm going to stick around for the show. We will uh, have a yep. good time. Oh, it's going to be fun. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good deal.